Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be doing Bandit, a beginner level capture the flag from Over the Wire. Uh, one of the first capture the flags that you'll probably come up landing cyber security. So I thought it'd be nice to revisit. It's been a while since I've gone through it. I'm not gonna say that I've gone through all of it. I haven't. I haven't gone through all of it. Uh, so that's sort of my personal goal here too. So. Let's go over the instructions and let's go through the first five levels together. So we've got Bandit here. The Bandit War Game is aimed at absolute beginners. It will teach the basics needed to be able to play other war games. If you notice something essential is missing or you have ideas for new levels, please let us know. So for us beginners, this game, like most other games, is organized in levels. You start at level zero and you try to beat or finish it. Finishing a level results in information on how to start the next level level. The pages on this site for level X contain information on how to start level X from the previous level. So we'll see that. The page from level 1 has information on how to gain access from level 0 to level 1. All levels in this game have a page on this website and they're all linked to from the side menu on the left of the page. You'll encounter many situations in which you have no idea what you're supposed to do. Don't panic don't give up. The purpose of this game is for you to learn the basics. Part of learning the basics is reading a lot of new information. If you never used the command line before, a good first read is introduction to the user commands. We'll have a little look at that. So there are several things that you can try when you are unaware of how to continue. First, if you know a command but you don't know how to use it, try the man page or the manual by entering man and then the command. We'll definitely be doing that. For example, man ls to learn about the ls command for listing contents of directories and information about files. The man command also has a manual. Try it, man man, and press Q to quit and N to search. I didn't know that. Man ls to search. So if I wanted to search, I'm pressing N and then I go D for down. Well, would you look at that? When you're in your man page and you hit forward slash and you type in a query like all, it'll highlight all. I didn't know that. Something new to learn every day. Second, if there is no man page, the command might be a shell built in. In that case, use help, example, help CD. Um, or you can usually run like a dash H or a dash help at the end of the command. That can work too. Also, your favorite search engine is your friend. Learn how to use it. I recommend Google. Lastly, if you are still stuck, you can uh, join us via the chat. So you're ready to start. Begin with level zero linked on the left of this page. Good luck. And we just have a note about VMs if you're struggling to connect to the, to the levels. Um, yeah. All right, let's go over to level zero, see what we're dealing with. Bandit level zero, our level goal. The goal of this level is for you to log into the game using SSH. The host to which you need to connect to is bandit.labs.overthewire.org on port 2220. The username is bandit0 and the password is also bandit0. Once you've logged in, go to the level one page to find out how to beat level one. So we've got an idea of the commands that we are going to need. So we just need one for this. And we've also got some link to some helpful reading articles. So it's always a good idea to uh, just go over these and read a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so secure shell. So the secure shell protocol is a cryptographic network protocol for operating network services securely over an unsecure network. Its most notable applications are for remote login and command line execution, right? So we can access other computers. We also have a how to use SSH. So a bit more of a practical guide. Um, this is showing installing a terminal and then running our command line here. So SSH is the command followed by a user at and then the system domain that we are connecting to. So we can see that here. SSH username at remote system um, and we can see to specify the port we can use the flag dash P and we can use that port there and uh, yeah we'll we'll start by doing that so let's go and do level zero together so starting off with SSH if you're in a Kali Linux distro like I am um, you'll have a nice 
GUI here, it'll light up when you've got the correct command, SSH. Sorry, let's get our user first, paste that in there, and then grab our system that we're going into. So remember that we have our at, so just like this, and then we can use the dash P and we can type in our port number to go to. So that is gonna be our first command. Um, it, it's pretty simple looking at it, right? Command, user, system, and the port. The port's just like the, the lane on the highway we wanna choose. And they've opened this specific port for us to go into and to use, uh, so that's what we'll use. So I've hit enter here and we have a message, just wanting to confirm, type in yes, and we will have a welcome message, but we need to gain access. Remember that the password is indeed bandit. Just a little thing with VMs, um, control shift V is gonna post that in. Did I say post? Paste that in. And now, we're on the system. And we can see here uh, that we have a nice interactive shell, meaning uh, it's updating on our end and it's actually gonna tell us the user we're logged into and the system we've logged into. And we can confirm by running commands like, who am I? Confirming that we are the right user, great. So that's level zero. And our instructions are, once we've logged in, let's go to level one to find out how to get past that level. So level zero is done, let's go over. So we've got level one, the password for the next level is stored in a file called readme, located in the home directory. Use this password to log into bandit one using SSH. Wherever you find a password for a level, use SSH on the same port of 2220 to log into the level and continue the game, great. So we've got a list of our further commands. So we'll go over most of these. LS, CD, cat, file, do, do, or find. So let's start off with our LS so we can list out our contents. So great, we've only got one content here in this particular directory. So what we can do is um, cat it out or concatenate the data within that file. And there we go. Um, if you're also completely new to these capture the flags, flags can come in different varieties. This is just like, you know, a string, just a combination of characters. Um, and this can just often be what the flag looks like. So I'm gonna highlight that, control shift C. And it's a good idea to sort of paste that somewhere so we've got a copy of it just in case. So what you can do is run the exit command. Um, that'll exit out of that SSH connection, we can hit the up arrow to get our last run command. And since we're logging in as a new user now, we're gonna change that zero to one. And that's how we're going to, as it says here, to log in to that. So that flag in this game, in this case, is gonna be the password to log in to the next level. That's what we got up here. So I still have that on my clipboard, so I'm just gonna paste that in and hit enter, and that should take us through to bandit one. Level goal, the password for the next level is stored in a file called dash, located in the home directory. Cool, so now we're sort of getting a bit more tricky. So let's hit control L just to clean that up. Let's hit LS. And just like the instructions said, we've got this file called dash. So we can try and cat that dash out and we're now sort of stuck because I assume dashes are used like in the actual shell that we're running. So like using, we use it in flags, like switches rather, so dash L or like whatever. It's it's not going to register. So we're just gonna hit control C to try and get out of that. So let's follow the helpful reading. And it just says to Google search for dashed file name so we can go ahead and see that and we've got a stack overflow how to open a dashed file using terminal so we can see a popular answer here this type of approach has a lot of misunderstanding because using dash as an argument refers to standard in standard out so if you want to open this type of file you have to specify the full location of the file such as period forward slash dash for example if you want to use cat forward slash dash so let's try that um just sort of to explain, if we run list period, um, that's gonna give us the same result because a period is referring to the current like directory. 
So that's what we're in. So by saying we're in this directory and then inside this directory, go to exactly this file, um, but instead we don't want to list it out, we want to cat it. That way we're telling the shell the exact file that we want to use. Sorry for interrupting your video, this is future Ash here. And that's also known as a relative file path uh, when you're including the other elements to the file. Um, relative because you're including that dot as a current directory. So relative to this directory. If we did like a longer file path right down to the root directory, that would be also um, known as an absolute file path. Okay, back to the video. Awesome. So a little bit of research got us that one. Great. So good idea to copy that, run exit again, and we'll hit up arrow and go back and change the one to a two now so we can get in. And since I've still got that on the clipboard, we can just paste that in, get access to our next level. Awesome. So let's go over to level three. Level three, the password for the next level is stored in a file called spaces in the file name located in the home directory. All right. So again, let's just list out our directory and we've got exactly as our instructions say, we've got the spaces in the file name. So again, we're just learning some of the smaller things that are in Linux. If we try to just type this out, it's gonna say cat spaces doesn't exist, cat in, I mean, spaces doesn't exist, in doesn't exist, this doesn't exist. So it's trying to look at each of these as separate like files or directories, uh, which doesn't exist because this is just one so let's go ahead and follow our Google search and let's see what we can find. We've got ask Ubuntu form here. To access a directory having spaces between the name, use backslash space to access it. You can also use the tab button to auto complete the name for us. So I, yeah, I like the tab option because it'll just do it automatically just by hitting tab. But uh, obviously we can then type that out. So. I believe that this, like this backslash in this situation is what's known as an escape character. Um, so that's telling like the program or the shell, you know, to, to ignore or take literally the next command. So yeah, we can do this manually, yeah. which works too. Uh, or we can just hit tab. Oh, I've gone spaces, spaces. Tab works nice. So in that situation, it now recognizes and ignores these spaces and just takes this as one file name and we get our flag. Awesome. So again, we've exited, just changing the two to a three. So we're going to the next level and we'll just paste in that next password. Great, so level four, the password for the next level is stored in a hidden file in the in here directory. Okay, control L, hit list. So we've got our first directory. So for my shell in particular, it's um, highlighted as blue rather than just white, but we can list LS. Actually, don't include in here, just go LS. Um, what I was looking for is showing this directory with this D, this, just, this switch just gives us more information and we've got this D here that just confirms that it's a directory. So if you're ever in a shell like that's running bad, but you don't have color to indicate like it's a directory, or it's a um, file, you can run ls-l and get some more information. And this is all of your permissions for. So let's now change directories since we are going into a directory. We can do that and we can then type ls. So it's empty. It is telling us that it's in here. Remember with our instructions, like it says it's hidden within here. So a little bit confusing. I've, I've listed out what's in here and I can't find it. So let's have a look if there's anything with our ls command that we can do. So I just use the list, this l switch, which gives us some more information. Still nothing in there. So let's look up the man page for our list. So straight away looking at this first option, there's a dash a or dash dash all, which says do not ignore entire entry starting with this period, which usually means the current directory, but in this case, it can actually mean a hidden file. So let's try that. So if we go ls a, would you look at that? We've got the current directory, we've got the directory above, and now we have a hidden 
something or other. So if we go LS-LA, which is honestly just a habit of mine for using, and now we see who this is owned by, and we see there's no D on this one, so this is indeed a file. Cool, so we just wanna cat that out. So in this case, we'll use the dot, and then we'll put the H, and I'll just hit tab, and it's recognized that it, it exists, and it's there, and there is our flag, awesome. So that'll do us for this episode. That'll take us through to the next bandit level, which we will tackle in another video. So if you enjoyed this one, um, please leave a like, subscribe if you really loved it. And if you have any feedback for me, if you found this good or like bad, like whatever, just feedback is great. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, yeah, let me know. And uh, if you've got any ideas, um, yeah, I'm always happy. If, what are you doing? What are you learning? You know, let me know. Uh, I'd be interested to, to see. So far, this is pretty good. Um, just giving you a little bit of like information for what's coming up. Like I've done, I think I've gone up to 15. So I've done like the first five, 10, and then 15. So we'll do that together. Uh, and then um, I don't know what is next I've, I've, i haven't finished bandit like i said at the start of this video i haven't actually done the full thing so um, this is like it's honestly i've been meaning to for a long time so this is sort of like good for me doing this it's sort of like gonna get me into the uh the rhythm again uh yeah so if you've gone through bandit also let me know if this got some tips because i know it, it does get harder um the first 15 levels definitely can get a bit tricky for when like for when we're just learning and getting used to this stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it ramps up. There's there's a lot of these commands, um, like there's a lot of switches even in these basic commands that, you know, can still get pretty confusing. Find, locate, like once we start using grep, that there's a lot of these commands that we gotta get used to in their switches. So yeah, it's good practice. Uh, yeah, so thanks again. If there's anything else, uh, yeah, let me know.